Hey guys, you're back with Trick the Summer, and right now we are about to play Lord and Order Legacies. And yeah, so let's get into it where we left off last time. And we're gonna continue. We're going to start by what we call defining your mic. I'm so sorry, but I feel like now that I have a new mic, I cannot bring the sound up in the voice. And I don't want to get copyrighted, so your music can stay like that. Moment. Gwendolyn Scott? Yes. I'm Detective Ray Curtis. This is Detective Benson. We need to talk to you. For I'm so sorry, but it still doesn't sound loud to me. Or somewhat loud. It probably is loud. Probably about the over of my voice. So let me just... Whatever. Let me just... Keep it like that. So sorry. I'm busy. Girl, what? It's important. We're detectives. My client is important. You can call my office. You know, a guy named Tom Newberry just gave me this girl's number, PR Flack. She likes to buy voicemail passwords and blackmail her clients. Maybe I'll call her instead. Oh, they're calling her. Five minutes. Was that fun, detective? Sometimes I like to play rough. Well, so do I. But a little charm can go a long way. Whoa. Um, be charming. Sorry, I promise this will only take a moment of your time. You're a busy girl. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I promise I won't make up extra questions as an excuse to talk to you longer. But we right, will. Romeo, settle down. Ask away. Okay. New topics have been revealed. Um, Rachel Trevino. Does the name Rachel Trevino mean anything to you? No. Should it? She was murdered last night. We found her body at the Parkview Regency. Oh, poor girl. As if life isn't tough enough for housekeeping. Oh, is there something wrong with that? Is something wrong with what she just said? Yes. Why shouldn't she shut it? Why is she suddenly acting nice? How, how does she know about life? How? What? I didn't say anything about her being with housekeeping. I must have read it in the paper. Nothing's been released to the papers yet. It must have been gossip. You know how these things get around, detective. How is that wrong? Tom Newberry already told us you knew her. Oh, that, Rachel. Of course. My mistake. I can be such an airhead. Do you know Tom Newberry? No. No, because she just said Tom Bear Newberry. <laughs> what? Girl, you're stupid. I'm smart, y'all. Like he says, he knows you. What? That's how we got your name. A lot of people know me. Do a lot of people call you? Not the right people. Whoa. Let's do celebrity. What gossip. kind of business do you do, Miss Scott? The PR biz is a very careful, very delicate balance between what you know, what you say, and who you say it to. There was this one guy. Used to be major A-list. Now he's major A-hole. Anyway, he crashed his car outside Savannah, stinking drunk and out of his mind on PCP. I mean, who does PCP anymore? He's like, oh, bitch, I do. He gets out, strips all his clothes off, and flags down a car full of college students. Well, by the time they got to Daytona Beach, they had two hours of him ranting about Canadians on their cell phone cameras. I had to pay them each $10,000 for the phones and footage. 40 grand, and on top of that, I had to pay out for damage to the car seats due to excessive sweating. Interesting <laughs> story, Miss Scott. 
What is a red herring? I don't know. So if I look up your phone records and Tom Newberry called you and you talked to him more than once, now, would I be crazy to think you're lying to me? I'd say you were just jealous. Oh my god, let's pray I don't get this wrong. People in public relations can never be... F no. Um, she has yet to answer a single question truthfully. That is true. She's getting angry in a sign of guilt. Tom Newberry said she was difficult to deal with. I got this, like, T.S. I'm not the jealous type, Miss Scott, and I don't like playing games. You knew him. Fine. Yes, we did business. I paid him for insider information. You paid Tom for what exactly? Passwords. I paid Tom for access to voicemail accounts. So you could delete Rachel Trevino's voicemails? Look, I really shouldn't say. Did you want to keep her quiet? Miss Scott, were you involved in her murder? No, no, I did delete Rachel's voicemails, yes, but I did it for someone else. On someone else's orders. Understand? No. Oh my god, how do you know for sure? Her statement must be true because it makes her look guilty. Oh, crap. All right, I'm listening. Why don't you tell me a little more? I think it was the was first one. Else involved? Let's pray I don't get this wrong. Who asked you to delete the voicemails? A client. I really can't tell you. I'm going to find out anyway. I'm actually pretty good at this detective thing. <sighs> now with me. Crap. I guess it's all over for me anyway. Here's the deal. I gave Rachel's password and voicemails to my usual buyer, Alexander Baron. Alexander Baran, as in CEO of Wider Media, the Russian guy who owns like half the television stations in America? The very same. Baran bought Rachel's voicemail access for me a few weeks ago and then told me to delete them all. Oh my god. Was he really? Was it the name of her notebook? No. The wider media. Okay, good. Praise wider the Lord. Media. Rachel wrote that in her day planner. It didn't click until now. Miss Scott, why was Alexander Baran interested in Rachel Trevino? She's a maid. He's a Russian billionaire. I, I don't get it. Rachel Trevino was not a hotel maid. She was an activist, a blogger, and she had uncovered some dirty, dirty secrets about Alexander Baran. He's a very bad boy detective. What did she find out? Baran has a problem keeping it in his pants, especially when it comes to housekeeping staff. Whoa, We've had to rapist. cover up a few unsavory encounters. Rachel tried to set up a sting going undercover at the hotel, and I honestly don't know what happened after that, but I think she got in over her head. Did Baran kill her? And this is where my lawyer would advise me to keep my mouth shut. Come on, Gwen. Oh, now it's Gwen. I like that. Okay, look, all I'm gonna say is the Parkview Regency Hotel has a front desk, right? Ask them who stayed there on Saturday. We did excellent work. Great, you can now... Okay, that's good, that's good. That was Cormac at the precinct. Alexander Baran was a guest at Parkview Regency the night Rachel was killed. He checked out earlier today, and he's on his way to MacArthur Airport. He's got a private jet and an appointment in London. Well, he's going to be late. Mr. Baran, Mr. Baran, Detective Curtis, NYPD. We need to talk to you about the murder of a hotel maid over the weekend. 
Why don't they ever change their clothes? Look like about an inch and a half to you, Ray? Sure does. Mr. He Alexander killed her. Brown, you are under arrest for the murder of Rachel Trevino. You have the right to remain silent. Hey! Interrogation room. OMG. You are under arrest. I don't know why we are wasting time here. I'm a Russian. I have diplomatic immunity. We did a little research You're a on you, Mr. Braun. Rachel's blog was a very interesting read. Maids? Waitresses? Executives at your own company? Is there any woman you wouldn't hit on? Your mom? <laughs> Miss Benson, I am a handsome, virile man. I radiate power. Women are attracted to it despite themselves. Here's a clue. When a woman is attracted to you, she does not slap you with a sexual harassment lawsuit. You've had 12. Wow. I'm a flirt. I get slapped with all sorts of things. <laughs> Uh, is he talking about titties? <laughs> uh... Did you know Rachel Trevino? No. We have DNA evidence that says you did. What kind of evidence? A rape kit. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. It was completely consensual. But you just said you didn't so know you her. you do know her. You cops think you have it all figured out. Guess what? We were lovers. Yes. I remember that. I'm not buying it. Sorry, Charlie. An earlier witness already told us Rachel didn't have a boyfriend. And you lied about knowing her just now. That's two strikes. Mama, three strikes you and you're out. Different. When I left the room, that girl was alive. You didn't come forward when you heard about the murder. I had no reason to. A maid is killed. How is this my business? She was your girlfriend. Ah, but you say she is not detective. You're Seems you're talking like you're in circles. To avoid this investigation. No, I had every intention of cooperation. In fact, when you found me, I was on my way to see my lawyer. Uh huh. In your jet. He's on vacation in Florida. He was gonna kick his ass to Russia. Oh my god, who's Baron? Baron. Oh god. Praise the Lord, because I did not remember. You said you were headed to London. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Moscow from there. And then you'd be out of our reach. Your knowledge of geography is so American. Shut your ratchet ass up. I'm um, just go with um an old lawsuit. You've had twelve lawsuits? Yes, what of it? They were all resolved. I'm just impressed. I mean, you gotta be some kind of gentleman to cause that much noise. I appreciate your sarcasm, but I'm not allowed to discuss the details of my settlements. Sorry guys, that was a kick. Let's talk about um I fell in with voicemails, I would get some stop kicking me. You had access to Rachel's voicemails, and you destroyed them to cover up your connection. Not true. I never touched the voicemails. He didn't touch it, the other lady did. True. This slippery eel is technically telling the truth. Um, who deleted the voicemail? Gwyneth. We're doing really good, you guys. We haven't had anything wrong yet. That's great. Nice try. <clears throat> Gwen Sorry. Scott told us she deleted the voicemails on your orders. You're guilty as sin, Baron. Boom, mm, so. bitch. Rachel knew all about you. She was Boom. gathering evidence about you, about unreported assaults. I wouldn't know anything about that. I never even heard these voicemails you're so very concerned about. You know, killing the witness to a crime gets you an automatic upgrade to murder one. What crimes? What witness? Rachel had evidence on you, Baron. She knew what you were up to. She wasn't a witness to anything. 
Those voicemails were about an expose, a plan to blackmail me. You're lying, and we can prove it. Oh my god, how can you prove he's lying? Rachel made it clear on her vlog that she know his lips are what? Is likely is a likely target for black men because as well. Could couldn't know what the voicemails and wait, Baron couldn't know what was in the voicemails unless he heard them, which he did not. Yeah, that's true. You just told us you never heard those voicemails, so there's no way you could know what they were about. You heard them, and you know it. You're looking better and better for this murder with every lie that comes out of your filthy mouth. I want to do alternate theory. You mentioned blackmail. Are you being blackmailed? Why, yes. Alternate theory may be Why cool. Why aren't you do investigating that? the criminals behind this whole operation? Who? I'm very certain it's the Russian mob. I won't share my money with them, which they did not earn. So they want me embarrassed and disgraced. I wouldn't cough up a ruble for those thugs. That's enough from you. Let's get back to the murder. So let's say, maybe this girl, Rachel, maybe she liked it a little rough. And you obliged. Whoa. Consenting adults, right? Sure, completely consenting. And the cane could have been involved. Could have been. Tell me how the cane fits into this scenario. Was it an accident? I'm sure it must have been. Did she ask you to use it? What? Yes, she asked me to do it. It was her idea. She liked that kind of thing, I guess. What? Like I said, it was all consensual. This girl was kinky. She saw my cane. She wanted to try it. it what? I don't believe him. So you admit it. No. No. What? We have evidence against you either way. Well, what what three pieces of evidence can best connect them to Rachel's death? Okay. Bruise marks on Rachel's neck, the cane he was carrying, and while immediate Oh, this is right. Sudden flight to London, the cane he was carrying in the hotel registry for the weekend. Uh, uh, it's true. Testimony of Tom Newberry, the bruise, well, no. The bruise on Rachel's neck, the cane he was carrying, and the DNA evidence. Oh my gosh. All of them can. I'm a. Uh, crap! You better wipe that smug smile off your face before you get to Rikers. Miss Benson. I'm innocent. I'm pretty sure it was the third one too. Charge. My lawyers will have this all thrown out, and my country will protect me. Really? We can place you at the murder scene. We can connect you to the victim and her voicemails. And your cane is a match for the murder weapon. Now might be a good time to panic. Well, he's panicking That's a now. Hell of a lot of evidence to throw out. That's why I have a hell of a lot of lawyers. Don't worry, I'll be out in a few days. Then maybe I'll call you, baby. Gosh, what? You are just not my type. Come on, Ray. Let's go get a bite. Mr. Baron can stew in his own ick for a while. Are you effing kidding me? Like, T F F F F F F. Um, like, what? What just happened? The district attorney's office. Got um, should we play through this? Um, uh, I don't know, guys. I'm gonna end this part here. I hope you enjoyed part three. I know it wasn't that long. I'm sorry, but it could it was somewhat long. It was like this is like 19, 20 minutes. I don't know, but I hope you enjoyed. We do have some type of evidence against somebody. It's all coming together, guys. I love you all so much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, favorite, and comment, and make sure you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That means everything to me, and yeah, guys, look forward to more Law and Order, Law and Order Legacies coming your way. So, peace in the streets, guys.